America, thee, ever thee I sing. I can sing such grandeur and glories about you. These are the thoughts of all men, of all races, in all ages and lands. The glory of the race of dreamers and adventurers, matchless with heroism, valor, song, supper, courtship. Large, generous, proud, handsome, and affectionate. Bearded, sunburned, dressed in the free costume of sailors. None to obey, but serving one another for a new world. This is their America, the America I sing. To this new world, first of the generations of white men, came the heroic Viking chieftain Leif Erikson. It was a time of adventure and new worlds to conquer. Leif Erikson was the first of the great explorers to act upon the enchantment of the new land beyond the Western Ocean, the first to colonize these shores. The DuPont Cavalcade of America presents a radio play based on fragments of the Vinland sagas of the great Viking chieftains, starring Carl Swenson of the Cavalcade players in the role of Leif Erikson. remember their bones. Vikings, born of the blood of Olaf the White, and after him Bjorn Buna, and after him Torstein the Red, and after him Torfin the Skull Cleaver, and others after. Then the hero Torvald, and his son Eric the Red, with us now, our leader. <laughs> How this Eric was banished from Norway and sailed to Iceland. After the killing of Eulf the Foul, Eric was banished forever from Hokadal, and he betook himself westward to Breidafirt and thence to Eriksvark. There he set sail in search of that country which Gunnbjorn, son of Ulf the Crow, had seen. And thus, Eric discovered this place, Greenland, and settled here in Brattalid. Let us recall our history as we are assembled here before the voyage to behold a new leader. Vikings, Eric now has a son full grown with the strength of an eagle. Twice before have I stood in this great hall to speak of our history and to set before you new leaders. And our great Eric the Red, who once took the sword, shall now pass it on. I have spoken. Now, Eric the Red. <laughs> Followed me through cold and bloody seas. We have much to show for that. Our terrible right arm has reached out to many shores. 
Our spears are stained with battle. Feared by all men, I, Eric the Red, have done this. And now I have a son, Leif, who has returned to us here from a long voyage to Norway. The king has put a gold cross about his neck. Is this not a sign he is here? Come forth, Leif, my son. My king, you who have followed me to this end of the earth, will you follow Leif now? Leif, my son, with this sword, the great name of Eric the Red is now upon your own shoulders. Carry that name well, for we Vikings have lived by it long. I take this sword, Father, and I will carve out the seas with it. And who dares stop the Vikings shall taste of this sword. Oh, Vikings! Vikings, tomorrow I sail eastward with the full tide, past Iceland to the islands rich with cattle and wheat. We strike quickly in return. The king of Norway has made us warriors of a new god, and his glory will shine on the tips of our spears. Let us drink to the voyage until the moon leaves the sky and the morning tide calls us to battle. Drink, Vikings! Leif, my son, the moon is fading in the sky. Even from our house, I can hear the tide. It is time. I'm ready, Father. Leif, in the history that I spoke in the great hall, I did not speak of one thing. I wish to tell it to you alone. Uh -huh. Years ago, it was told by Bjarna, who is now dead, that the wind swept his boat to the west for many days. And through the mist, one day, he saw a new land. Uh -huh. No man has seen it since. You shall know that there is a prize greater than all the eastern plunder. Father, why have we never sailed west? It is but a wild story told by a man. A land beyond the western sea. Oh, that tale stirs something in my blood. When you know the seas better, lad, then you may make your own paths on it. Until then... Best follow the known stars eastward. Yes, sir. The tide pulls at our keels. The wind is ready. And I too, Hockey. Farewell. Farewell until I return to my house again. And I shall remember your story, O oh great priest. All in your places, men. Lift the sail. Hold it yours. Wing with the tide. Away. Our prize ahead. What land is it, Hockey? According to the last star of morning, I make it an island of the Hebrides. Is it a rich land? Is it worthy of our valor? The soil is known to be fertile. It's uh, said the women are of a wondrous beauty here. Good, good. Let us pick some for the long winter. Tell you can stay behind and watch the boats. Huh? By my blonde beard, I shall take two wives this time. Oh, oh. <laughs> good, good. Lock oars. Into the water. We're close enough to ride in with the surf. All right, all hands, easy. Now, with the tide on the third wave. I, oh, take it with the next wave. Easy. In she goes. Left. Left it. Pull, pull, my lad. Pull. Listen, they have seen us. Uh, we shall take 20 head of cattle and a good quantity of wheat. We have not many plows to go leave. Uh, then she will take some plows. And all. And some of the women, too. Uh, they're coming closer to find out who we are. We'll tell them. Draw swords. Let's see how many we can spare to the trees. Forward, men. Forward with the spirit of Eric the Red in your heart. <laughs> Uh, 
Now the cattle bellow like women. They're frightened at leaving the Hebrides. A plague on the cattle. How many men have we lost? Twelve good men left. Ah, the fools. They should have spat in the face of death and fought their way back to the ship. We shall mourn them with these women, eh? Well spoken, Helga. Let's divide the women among us. Aye, that's the right. Who'll take this one with the long hair? I will. Huh? And this one who wails like ten women. I claim her. And now this silent, pretty one who eats like a bird. I take this one. You will not take me. What? <laughs> she speaks. <laughs> come, my name is Hockey. I have a log house. Do not come near me. Huh? Watch out, Hockey. She will scratch you. <laughs> no one of you will take me as you have taken the others. You cannot harm me. For the white Christ is in my heart. Oh. <laughs> Leave her alone, Hockey. I will tame her. Woman, I am Leif, son of the great Eric the Red. Have you heard of me? Speak. Oh, you won't speak. And I'll kiss you. Huh? Come here. No! Oh, oh. then I must fetch you. Come. Watch out. Yeah. Climbing the rope for the sail. Come down. Come down, you little fool. I'll bring her down, Leif. No, I'll climb after and she'll pay for this for Stop. <laughs> you come any higher, I shall jump. By the gods, I shall catch you and tame you. Look out. She's going to jump. The hole. Oh. The tide will carry her out to the channel. We have enough women without her. Let the fish have her. Leif, what are you doing? Have you gone mad? Let her go. Leif, Come back. You are listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America presenting the story of Leif Erikson starring Carl Swenson of the Cavalcade Players. The Cavalcade of America is brought to you each Monday by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Thou hast upheld me, and hast not made my enemies to rejoice over me. Who is it? Speak. It is I, Tiruna. Oh. Stand when you speak to me, woman. Why do you come here at night on this lonely beach? I come to pray, as you see me now. Whom do you speak to? There's no one here. I speak to my God who is everywhere, listening. What do you ask of him? I ask him for peace. Why? Are you not happy? Have you not been given a house? I command you to smile. It's hard to smile or to sing in a strange land. And yet you're beautiful. Even with your eyes a thousand miles away. Ah, you're proud. I'd not harm you for that. And are you proud, too, of your boats as they come home filled with stolen wheat and cattle and weeping women? That's our life. I have watched, too, your sacrifices and all your bloodshed. And that is why you find me here on my knees. For I cannot live happily among your people. Why do you look at me that way? Well, be not afraid to speak. That cross around your neck. Oh, the king of Norway put it there with his own hand. He proclaimed me a Christian and all my people. But we are first Vikings. You cannot serve such opposite gods. Oh, let me teach you the ways of this new god, the white Christ. Why do you smile at me? I smile at your courage to talk this way to a warrior. Tell me more of this god who can make you so brave. What are his sacrifices? He asks that we live only by his words, which are peace and love of one another. Those are strange words to live by. Are they not more wonderful words than plunder and hate? But is it not the way of this world of ours? The strong shall conquer the weak. That is not his way. He taught us the meek shall possess the land. Well, 
to me. <laughs> How can that be? The fury of fire and sword and conquest shall pass away. You, you have watched the seas. Is it not the tempest that is ugly and rages only to pass away? But the calms, they are beautiful, are they not? And more enduring. Well, the sea is like that. Are men? Am I such a man? I wish you to be such a man. You have been brave. Now you must be wise. No. No, I don't say anymore. Go. Go, go. You trouble me with your wisdom. Leave me to think. <laughs> upon my breast means. She has taught me the words, thou shalt not kill. What then would you do? What then will a Viking do? Once we Vikings were explorers, and from this day, I will search out new land, even as you, great Eric, once did. Where will you go? Westward. For as has been told, I believe there lies a land beyond the western sea, and I shall find it. I shall conquer it without war in the name of the God whose cross I wear. And where are your ships? I shall take but one ship. And where are your men to sail out over the edge of the world? Have we no sons of Vikings here? Men, are you as brave as your fathers? Are there any here who will sail for a new world, even if they find it at the bottom of the sea? Now who will come? Speak now. I will sail. And I. We will follow me. <laughs> How do the 
stars read this night, Cowboy. They tell us we are moving west like a bird. Uh, it is many long weeks, and the moon bleeds as an omen. There she stands, in the stern of the reef. The woman from Guna, which cursed the voyage. I am not afraid of death. To be taken there by a woman. Listen to the sound of the waters. We must throw her overboard to the sea god. Who is the man to do it? Or else we sail to what do? I will do it. I've had enough of witchery. Enough! Well, Snorri, what do you come here for? The woman. Listen to the sea god calling for a sacrifice. Get back to your sail. Away with her, or else we shall never reach land. Put your sword back. Not until her blood is on it. Stand aside, Lee. Go. Back, I say. Not I. Back. I go. Go. Talker, he shall die too. I am a little afraid now, Lee. Perhaps they are right. I have brought all this to pass. No, Togun, it was I. I wanted always to seek forth this new land, and we shall find it. We shall follow the great curve of the earth on and on. We shall shrivel down to our very bones, and the boards on the boat will rot. But we shall find it. Open your eyes. The last star is out and morning is here. I'm tired. Tired of waking always in this lonely sea. What do you hear, Torguna? This. Bird. It cannot be. Look there. Just ahead, through the mist. At last. Yes, at last. Land. Leaf, can it be true? Tell me it is true at last. Wake up. Up, all you tired Vikings. Uh, Wash the sleep from your eyes and look there. See. See the strange birds above us. Land ahead. The water is warm. Smooth as a lake. We can almost reach out and touch the trees ashore with our arms. We are close enough now, Leaf, to wade in. How green and silent the land is. It looks as if it were more than an island. It is part of God's earth, and that is enough. It is a place where food will grow. And children. Oh, come, my Torguna. I shall carry you in toward the white beach. We shall be the first to set foot there. Tabu! Hey. Help us over the side. Oh, oh. See how clean the water is. How golden the sand shines through it. I just said the dew is as honey on the tongue. Oh, this must truly be the fortunate place. The land of the western sea. Quickly, Leif, set me on the shore that I may know it is not a dream. Now, my goddess Targuna, I set you down and kiss you. <sighs> Kneel with me on this new land. Let us give thanks to the white Christ who brought us here safely and made us to love each other. In time, I will learn his wisdom from you, Targuna. And his words of peace shall grow in this earth, as though we planted them there. As good things grow, as trees grow, or as flowers. Yes, he has brought us through the unknown seas to a land that shall be known for all time. In the story of chemistry at work in our world, DuPont tells you how chemistry, with its long and honorable record of service to industry, is doing its part to eliminate bottlenecks in American production today. Even if you'd never heard the word until a few months ago, you know today what a bottleneck is. Few words are as descriptive. You can't get more water out of a bottle than will pass through its neck in a given time, and you can't get more products out of a production line than will pass through the tightest bottleneck in the line. With the country busy at the biggest job of high-speed production the world has ever known, 
Much depends upon America's ability to widen every bottleneck in every defense plant. And much depends on chemistry. In making the engine bearings of airplanes, for instance, silver plating is required. This plating was once a slow operation. But today, the time needed has been sharply reduced by using DuPont silver and potassium cyanides in the process. There are die castings in airplane motors, too, that consume valuable minutes in a necessary cleaning process before they are dipped into the plating bath. Today, thanks to the chemist, a special degreasing vapor spray cleans them and hurries them along, spotless and dry, in three minutes. An expanded Army and Navy call for a good many kinds of equipment. At first glance, you wouldn't think bleaching, bleaching cloth, could be a bottleneck in defense. But every soldier, every sailor must have uniforms and blankets and sheets and towels. Most of the millions upon millions of yards of fabric called for must be bleached. Ordinary bleaching is a batch process in which four or five tons of cloth at a time move from kettle to kettle, taking as long as 24 hours to run through. Today, in a continuous peroxide bleach developed and perfected by DuPont chemists, Whole miles of fabric twisted into an endless rope run through the bleaching vats in a few hours. You'd hardly expect to find a bottleneck in pontoon bridges, but a pontoon, or a ponton as it's sometimes called, will sink in the water if it leaks. The lumber of which the pontoon is made can't have too many cracks in it. How can lumber be dried for pontoons with a minimum amount of cracking? On the West Coast today, a number of lumber mills are using DuPont synthetic urea to overcome this difficulty. Wood treated with urea dries evenly with few, if any, cracks. And by treating wood with urea, mills free their drying kilns for other lumber, speeding production and widening another bottleneck. Chemistry has served industry faithfully for many years. Aiding in the solution of our defense bottleneck problems is a job in keeping with the long tradition of the chemist who brings you, in the words of the DuPont Pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, the Cavalcade of America presents Kenneth Delmar of the Cavalcade Players in the colorful and exciting story of Geronimo and the last of the great Indian wars before peace and justice were finally established between the red men and the white men of the American nation. In our story of chemistry at work in our world, we will tell you about American camphor and its many services to mankind today. We hope you'll join us at the same time next Monday when DuPont again presents the Cavalcade of America. In support of Carl Swenson as Leif Erickson on tonight's program were the Cavalcade players with John McIntyre as Eric the Red, Frank Reddick as Snorri, Everett Sloan as the High Priest, and Jeanette Nolan as Torguna. Our play was written by Norman Roston. The orchestra and the original musical score were under the direction of Don Burries. On the Cavalcade of America, your announcer is Clayton Collier, sending best wishes from DuPont. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.